This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, my special guest is Seth Bongartz, the president of Hildeen, uh, the Lincoln family home in Manchester, Vermont. A very interesting place, and uh, some, uh, some place that uh, people will look forward to uh, visiting. And we're going to try to learn everything we possibly can about Hildeen uh, from my guest, Seth. Welcome, Seth, to Positively Vermont. Well, thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself first. Uh, well, let me see. I'm a, I was born in Vermont. I lived my whole life in Vermont. Um, I, like you, uh, practiced law for a number of years. And then um, 16 years ago, I took the leap and took the job at Hildeen. And I've been president of Hildeen for just a few days shy of 16 years at this oh, point. That's great. Well, tell us about Hildeen, the Lincoln family home. Tell us uh, the history of it. The history? Um, well, that could, that, could, that could be the whole show, so I'm going to do it very quickly. Um, Robert Lincoln was the only child of the four Lincoln children to survive to adulthood. Um, he went on to lead a very interesting life in his own right, uh, served four years as uh, minister, minister of War uh, and uh, what is now Secretary of Defense. And he served as four years to minister to England, and along the way was a lawyer, and led a successful law practice, and along the way started representing the Pullman Company, and then eventually became president of the Pullman Company, and that's how he really made his uh, money, and that was really the bulk of his career was with the Pullman Company. And um, he had visited Manchester during the Civil War with his mother and his younger brother, Tad, in 1864. And then through a roundabout way that's too, you know, take too much time to go into, found himself back in, Man well, actually, do, he, back in Manchester with his law partner who had a summer house in Manchester. So through completely circuitous route, found himself back in Manchester, you know, 15, 20 years later. And eventually, uh, he liked it there and purchased land and built the house that, that is now the, the home on the 412 acres that is Hildeen. That's great. And how long did he live there? Well, Robert, um, they, they purchased the property in 02, went through the design process, and then moved into the house in the spring of 05. And Robert actually died at Hildeen on July 25th, 1926. Mm -hmm. So they were there um, a good six months a year, maybe even longer sometimes. We know, for instance, they were there for Christmas in 1912, and we suspect a couple of other times. Um, but you know, for that period of time, um, that was really the, the, what they considered their real home. Hmm. And how did the, the property develop into a, a, a tourist uh, attraction? Well, um, when the Robert's granddaughter, Peggy, who was the last one to live there, um, died in 1975, um, some people in town got together. That's a, that's a real story but got together um, and raised the money to buy the property because they wanted to preserve it. They recognized the, its value to the, to the state, actually, to the nation, actually. Um, and so they managed to complete the purchase in 78 and it opened to the public in 79 in a, in a very sort of a limited way initially. And it's just grown and grown since then. Amazing. Well, describe what the, uh, the main house is like. What, what, what is that? Is it a mansion or is it a farmhouse? Oh, that's such an interesting uh, question. It's, it's, I guess you would think of it as like a mansion on the one hand. On the other hand, Robert and his wife, Mary Harlan Lincoln, could have easily built that in Newport. They were sort of, you know, they were, those, are, those were their contemporaries. Robert mm -hmm. had made, you know, they made a lot of money and Rob, that Robert, they could have, so they could have had a grandiose house you know, for built for entertaining, and what this really is, and one of the things that people comment on um, frequently when they come to Hildeen is they say, "I could live here." So it's it's comfortable. It's a home. It has its elements of you know being grand. It's got a kind of a, you know, the entry hall, although it's not huge, makes a statement, and the grand the staircase up, and you know not like you would have found typically in Vermont at the turn of the 20th century. Um, on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's really a home, and that's what they did with it. And what is it like today? Um, well, one of the things, by the way, about the house that is very special is that nobody ever lived in the house except Lincoln's. And therefore, it's 
almost all original. The furniture was original, um, the paintings on the walls, every, every, and the ph photographs, almost everything is original, and that really sets it apart from a lot of other historic homes, and uh, I've been to some others that don't have the original furnishings, and they just don't have the same feel. One of the things that's very special about Hildina is that it, it's, and the way that we have it established as it relates to the house is that it's sort of like you're visiting the house while Robert and Mary are out for lunch. Mm -hmm. it, and it feels that way. They can still be there. And how, how many floors is it? Describe how, what, what the length is. Uh, it's 8,000 square feet. Um, it's uh, two, two floors. Um, it got, it's got one of the classic uh, basements that we are working to. We're, we're nearing the point that we're going to be able to open that as well you know, with a washroom, ice room, uh, wine room, coal room. It's really kind of fascinating, but we haven't quite gotten to the point that that's open to the public yet, but that's coming. Um, but the first two floors, you really, you come in and you get a real feel um, for the Lincoln family. And what about, uh, you know, paintings on the wall and other types of uh, accoutrements and, and uh, personal effects? Well, that it's thing? all personal. I mean, it's very, there's, we've got Robert's cigar boxes sitting in, the in his bedroom. Uh, paintings that they had on the wall. Um, you know, it's all, in the book, the library are all the original books. Um, it's really kind of remarkable. Really? And uh, I understand there's an organ there. Tell us about the pipe organ. The organ is called an electric pneumatic organ. Um, and uh, it has, it's kind of complicated because it has, as you can see, when you see the organ when you come into the house, but then it has a system that sends messages from either the key, the keyboard, or from, it was a player organ, and then it goes down to the cellar where there's a bellows room with this big, huge machine, the bellows, that sends the, uh, the signals from there, the air, up through the portico share on the outside to the pipes of the organ that are at the top of the second, uh, of the stairs, on the, uh, partway up the stairs to the second floor, a thousand pi pipe organs. Um, it's really quite a, so it's one of the few from that era um, that are, especially in the home, that are still uh, being played every day. Amazing. And I understand that uh, in addition to the home, there, there's uh, a number of other parts of the estate, and we're going to try to go through yeah. some of them. Uh, what about this garden uh, that's attached to it? Oh, well, the garden is, I mean, that's one of the reasons that, in particular, that people come to Hildeen. Um, we have um, the formal gardens that were went with the house. We have restored uh, very well. We actually, and we have a full-time um, horticulturist. Actually, she's from South Burlington, uh, Andrea Lucchini, um, graduate of a master's degree from UVM in horticulture, and uh, we, that's a long story, but we got her to come to Hildeen, um, and she's been, she takes care, leads the crew that takes care of the gardens. Um, and um, we have a, the family's cutting and kitchen gardens, which are behind the Welcome Center, so the formal gardens behind the house, cutting and kitchen gardens behind the Welcome Center. Uh, all very much intact. So that's the, and the gardens, one of the things that I think is remarkable about the gardens is that they hold their color from early spring all, almost all the way through October. Wow. So I go up there um, in the beginning of October and the gardens are gorgeous. It's, so it's really, it's kind of remarkable because different things come into bloom at different points of the year. That's great. Uh, what about the uh, carriage barn? You have a carriage barn there? Yeah, well, the carriage barn um, is now the Welcome Center. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, in, I forget when, 07, 08, we did a top to bottom restoration of the carriage barn. It's really one of the great things that we've accomplished since we've been there, this, te this team of us. Um, and so it is gorgeous, frankly. Um, still has the st stalls in it. We, it's, a, it's, it's the Welcome Center. It's where you buy your ticket to get in, and it's where the, um, the museum store is, and there's a little theater space so that where people can see videos to get oriented to Hildeen as they come and they begin their day there. Um, but the, uh, it's just a, it's gorgeous. And tell us about this uh, agricultural center that's attached to the property. Well, there's two. Um, we, have, um, we have a goat dairy at which we milk goats and make cheese. Um, and that's really one of the special things at Hildeen, and we can talk more about that depending on where the conversation goes. We could spend the whole time talking about that. Um, but, um, and 
it's very visitor friendly. It was built to be very visitor friendly where everything's in order and you can see the entire operation, everything from the feeding of the goats to the milking, to the cheese making, to the aging room. Um, and it's, well, again, all set up for guests to come through. And we have a lot of kids, uh, we have a lot of kids programs around that, around a lot of aspects of Hildeen, but one of them uh, is at the goat dairy. And uh, how, how long does that operate? Does it operate year round? Year round. Um, the goats are dried off for part of the year. In fact, they're dried off right now as they rebuild their, as they're um, pregnant. They rebuild their colostrum to give birth in the spring, and then the milking starts again. In the meantime, we bring in cow's milk cheese from one of the farms in the Meadowy Valley, um, and we make, uh, we'll make a cow's milk cheese. Most of the year, we're making goat's milk. That's amazing. And uh, I understand there's a, a working train there. Well, it's not a working train. We have a... Um, Robert, as I mentioned earlier, was president of the Pullman Company, the Pullman Palace Car Company, which was the, probably the largest manufacturing company in the world at the time that he was president. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things Robert did was convert from wood to steel. So we decided that in order to sort of round out the story about Robert Lincoln, we wanted to get a Pullman car built during his tenure, and we decided that we wanted to get a wooden car built, built during his tenure. And we now have um, what is the, you know, the, the finest example of a wooden Pullman car in the world at Hildeen. It is in, in a gorgeous uh, building. It sort of feels like a, um, like a train uh, station. And you um, can go into the car? Oh, yeah. You can go into the car. And it's in, just in, it was a meticulous restoration that took four years. Amazing. I think the last time uh, you were here, we, we spoke about that, and that was almost four years ago. Okay. I, I, didn't, I, knew, I couldn't remember how long ago it was that I was here. Amazing. So yeah, that's there. And we have, now we have a, we have one of the goals for the property is to utilize the entire 412 acres and make that 412 acres all part of our educational program, uh, which is which is deep and rich, and also a place that is open and available to visitors as the routine guest experience. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get guests out across the entire property. It you know 20 years ago or whatever the, the it was mainly about the house. And you know the house is still the centerpiece. It's really quite a remarkable, um, remarkable thing. But we're now we've worked since we got there to expand and have the whole. Pro you know the Lincolns didn't think of the house as their home. They mm -hmm. thought of the 412 acres as their home. Mm -hmm. And we're we're thinking about it the same way. So we now have uh, a second agricultural operation um, that uh, where we have alpacas that we from which we take the fleece and produce yarn um, and and sheep and an heirloom uh, variety of uh, Vermont heritage breed of cattle, uh, Randalls. There's only about something like 750 or 800 of them. So we're, we're getting, we're gonna be involved in the, in the restoration of the gene pool for the Randall cattle. So in addition to a, a museum, it's a working farm then. We have, yeah, and again, there's sort of two. We, in a way, we think of them as one because we do, things go back and forth, but, but there are two different locations, the two farms, um, and both of them tied very much not just to the guest experience, although that's a large part of it, but also to education. Um, with you know, we have three thousand elementary school kids come to Hildeen every year on buses with their teachers for uh, really rich programs in natural science and agriculture and and hands-on history. Um, and then we have a, a program with the local high school down at the second farm, uh, where we also have a, a fabulous teaching greenhouse, um, where we have kids come. Um, because it's close enough, they, there's a full-time Burn Burton teacher at Hildeen year-round, um, and kids come for classes down at the Dean Farm. But it's not, we're not trying to produce farmers. Mm -hmm. It's really about agriculture, natural science, plant and soil science. So we get the, the entire range of kids involved in that. So it's really, um, it's really a, and the guests can, can sort of get a feel for all of that when they're there, both, both their own experience and then part of their own experience is seeing it all the educational things that are going on at the same time that they're there. It really makes, makes the whole thing um, deep and rich. Great. Tell us about this observatory you have there. Um, Robert was a very good amateur uh, astronomer. Hmm. Um, and so he built um, an observatory. Um, and of course, Robert could afford to have um, the finest scope you could get in the day, Warner and Swayze. Um, 
made in Cleveland with a six inch uh, brochure lens and you've just about now you've exhausted my knowledge of astronomy mm -hmm. but I know that the, the, and uh, but um, really quite um, and we have it all and we've had it restored and it actually functions we actually our problem has been that we, we don't do too much with it because we haven't been able to find the right person to help us uh, none of, nobody on staff is an astronomer uh, but but it's open to the public and you can come and see it and the, the scope it, the scope is really kind of wonderful and the observatory itself there's it's so period because they don't build observatories that way anymore everything's you know uh, different but um, you're looking at, you're really back in time with this big long scope with a viewing chair it's really quite remarkable and is that attached to the house itself no, no it's um but it's within the you know so it's right there so it's a separate little building separate little building yeah that's amazing and I understand, uh, in addition to, to the house and, and uh, the other uh, elements you described, there's a meadow land? Uh, sort well, that's, of that's the part where the second farm is. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, what I didn't mention about that is that that's relatively speaking, well, okay, let me back up for a second, Hill Dean. The, when you come in to Hill Dean, you are on the hill, roughly speaking, half the property. And the Dean, uh, sort of old English or Gaelic for um, valley with stream, mm -hmm. is 300 feet below. It's all connected, and we get people back and forth, and there's ways to do it. But um, so it's hill and Dean, and the Dean portion has both the meadows that you're talking about, um, where we have the second agricultural operation and a greenhouse and the high school program, and 80 acres of wetland um, adjacent to the Batten Kill. It's part of the Batten Kill wet, wetland, um, and. Within that, we have a 600-foot floating boardwalk really? that goes from point to point um, that is really remarkable because you're really literally right out almost at water level um, in the middle of a wetland. And it's an experience that you don't get. It's very peaceful. Uh, on the one hand, you really get to see things that you don't otherwise get to see. Amazing. Um, and. Uh Tell us about uh, some of the other uh, things you have. Do you have a, a, a bookstore or a souvenir shop? Or things well, like we that? have a museum store mm -hmm. um, that um, where we have books um, and but w and we sell a lot of Vermont produce. What we try to do is within the store, the museum store, is make sure that anything that we're selling relates to um, relates directly to things that are going on at Hildeen. But you know, one of we have. A lot of great Vermont food product. Really? Um, yeah. So you can just uh, have your education experience, your historical experience, and yeah. get some local yeah. flavor. Yeah, and local flavor. Um, we sell, obviously, our, we sell our cheeses there. We sell goat, goat's milk soap that we make hmm. there, honey that we produce, um, and um, potted plants, heirloom peony seeds um, from, the, the, uh, from the Lincoln's original peonies. Um, so a lot of our own product, plus we try as much as possible to have it be other Vermont product. Mm. No, it's a very interesting website, and it, it's, it's beautifully done, and it has a, it's amazing what's there, and just to get into it. In fact, uh, it, it took me a while just to even just get some cursory preparation of it, and uh, I commend it to, to our viewers. And one of the things that I, I found unusual was this roadster you have there. Oh, yeah. Um, <coughs> So Robert and Mary Harlan Lincoln had three children, um, w one of whom, the youngest, was Jessie. Um, and um, she, um, I guess among other things, she liked fast cars. She had an air-cooled 1928 Franklin that was at the time one of the you know, highest, <laughs> could, could go faster than most other cars. Uh, it's, a, it's a coupe it's a, um, with a rumble seat. Um, and um, one of my the disappointments for, for me is that people were so much smaller than I can't drive it. I can't get into the seat because <laughs> I'm 6'3". But we have it out. And on nice days, we bring it out and park it in front of the house. Really? Um, and we take it in and out every night. And, of course, during the winter, it is put away for the winter. Can people ride in it? No, no. <laughs> but it does run. Wow, 1928. Yeah, yeah 1928 air-cooled Franklin. And, and who maintains that? Uh, we have somebody on staff who keeps it going, and uh, of course it's not easy to find parts, but it, it uh, runs um, the distance from where we keep it at night and for the winter and up to the house is about, uh, you know, uh, several hundred yards, so it does that twice a day during the summer. Oh, that's very entertaining. And how many people a year do you, do you get visiting? Uh, that's 40,000. 40, uh, we hit 40,000 this year. Um, 
<clears throat> and we know that about half of the people who come to Hildeen are in the area for the purpose of coming to Hildeen. Um, we've become a major w destination for a number of reasons, but one of them is the Lincoln community, which is worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, and we are a Lincoln site. We focus very much on um, the, the legacy of President Lincoln, as did his son Robert. Robert spent a lot of his life focused on his father's legacy, and we do the same thing. We also have, um, incidentally, it's not a huge Lincoln collection, but, a, but some really interesting Lincoln pieces, um, in artifacts. And one of the one of them that we have that people love because how can you not? Because it's so iconic. Uh, we have one of three of Lincoln stovepipe hats still in existence, and that's um, right now on display in an exhibit that we've produced um, around Lincoln's second inaugural. It's actually a fabulous exhibit, I'll have to say. I'll be immodest and say that it's a really, really good exhibit. And that's going on right now? Yeah, that's right now. And what yeah. does that consist of? Um, well, what we're trying to do is get people to focus on the language of the second inaugural and what's going on. But under, we have, so we have the clauses. With malice towards none? Well, that's sort of the end of it. Yeah, yeah we have the clauses around the room at the top, and then with some artifacts are some things that help illuminate the meaning of those underneath of them. Um, we have a Bible that belonged to Lincoln. We have his stovepipe hat. Um, we're a, we have a relationship with Brown University that allows us to borrow freely from Brown, because uh, they have one of the great Lincoln collections. Um, and so we have some, some things that um, came, originated with Brown University that are part of the exhibit. So it's really, um, it's a, I think it's a stunning exhibit. And if you really spend the time to take advantage of it and really think about what's going on in the second inaugural, you realize what a remarkable speech it was. I think there's a photograph of that uh, that speech, a uh, very famous photograph of that. Uh, but what about photographs? Do you have photographs on, on display? Um, yeah, there are some photos in the exhibit. Um, we don't have photos particularly, yes we do, we have a few in the house, but we have only what, if you think about it, outside of the room with the exhibit and the rest of the house, we want, we have on, we have out things that Robert and Mary would have had out, mm -hmm. which does include some pictures of their children. Um, but we don't do other things in the house that wouldn't have been something that Robert and Mary would have had at the time that they were there. Excellent. Now, uh, in addition to uh, uh, support from uh, the historical community around the co uh, country. Do you have uh, people who are partners or uh, assist in, in, the, in the running of the place, corporate sponsors and things like that? Um, well, we have a corporate uh, partners program. Um, we have another with, with um, inns and lodges, that, you know, sort of within a 40-mile radius or whatever. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, um, we produce some of, a lot of our own revenue, you know, some through admissions, mm -hmm. um, some through the store. Um, we sell the goat cheese, we sell our honey, we do other things like that. Um, and in the end, we have, um, like any organization like, like Kildeen, um, a major annual fund um, that's going on right now and trying to close it out successfully and end the year in the black. It's always mm -hmm. a struggle. Um, and we do have some, some businesses, though, that are very supportive of us. Excellent. Now, tell us about volunteers. Do you need volunteers? Well, eh, sure, um, and we have, it's a little hard to count how many volunteers we have because some of them will come for just one, th one thing a year, um, but we have b about 100 we, um, volunteers that, and they really play a role at Hildeen. Mm -hmm. um, they have their, their job, like the, for instance, the cutting in kitchen gardens, um, although Andrea, our horticulturist, sort of oversees it in the grand scheme of things. All the work is done um, by volunteers, and they do a beautiful job with that, and then everything that we produce goes to the food bank. Excellent. It's actually playing a role the, for the hungry. Now, as we said before we started, it's, it's amazing how fast the time goes when we talk about this, and uh, you're really a, a wonderful uh, spokesman for this. Uh, and one final thing, I just want to cover this Nordic rental. Tell us what that's about. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a little... Um, we, well, let me back into that a little bit. One of the things that we want, the way that we want people to think about Hildeen is as a place where you come and spend the day outside mm -hmm. um, with really interesting and connected things to do while you're there, be it the house 
the Pullman car, the goat dairy, the Dean farm now, um, the observatory, the gardens, where, you know, and the trail systems themselves. By the way, we really folk, we have, we have um, miles of trail systems that we really do a very good job both in the summer and the winter um, keeping available. So when people come, your listeners, if they are coming next summer, you know, wear, wear, a, wear a pair of sneakers, you know, decent sneakers and or maybe even light hiking shoes. You don't, you don't have to do this, but it's, a, you, it's to really take advantage of it. It's a place to really spend, you can, it's just wonderful um, to spend a lot of time both inside and outside at Hildeen. And in the winter, it's sort of the same thing, except that you do it on skis or snowshoes. Nice. Um, now, we also have transportation if people you know, can't do that. We have, we have vans that take people around to the, to the goat dairy or the, or the Pullman car or the house, whatever it is that they, place they want to go. But it's, um, so we're trying to make it a rich, deep experience um, across the whole 412 acres. That's Year wonderful. round, yeah. That's wonderful. I want to thank you for appearing uh, today, Seth, uh, on uh, Positively Vermont. And uh, you have a wonderful website, which all of this is uh, described quite uh, wonderfully in some photographs. And, uh, and uh, you're open all year round. Yeah, we, we close five days a year. Um, uh, three days at Christmas, 24th, 25th, 26th, Eastern Thanksgiving, open every other day year round, 930 to 430. Excellent. And so plan, if you come, really try to get there early. And it's the place you come and spend a day or even two days. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Seth. And uh, this is Dennis McMahon uh, thanking you uh, for uh, joining Positively Vermont with our special guest today, Seth Bongartz, the president of Hildeen, the Lincoln Family Home in Manchester, Vermont. Thanks for watching.